and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I am your host, Fluff. And if you have a question, feel free to leave them on down below or go on over to my Ask FM account thing. Maybe we'll get you squared away. Or maybe I'll just sit here and drink out of my buddy Morty. I don't know. We should probably answer some things though. First question, what strings would you recommend for a four string bass in B flat standard? That's pretty low for a four string, but really think of it as the bottom four of a five string tuned down a half step. And for that, uh, I've only had to do that tuning once, the standard. Normally I'm in drop. I did have to do, go, I, I did have to go that low for um, a tuning once. And what I actually ended up using, I have these because I, I have a bunch of these. Uh, I used the uh, lower four, the four biggest strings from the five pack uh, power slinkies from Ernie Ball. Now you can do this with any pack and any brand but basically you're gonna look for a five string bass pack and just throw away the smallest string because obviously you don't have a five string, you have a four string as you mentioned in your comment. But yeah, a 135 on the low will pretty much get you there. Uh, 135, 105, 85, and 70 is what I like. That's what feels good. Uh, you didn't mention the bass, so I'm gonna assume it's something like a P bass or an Ernie Ball Stingray or you know an Ibanez or something like that, not a multi-scale ding wall or, or something of that nature. So yeah, check out five string packs, uh, experiment with different sizes and uh, yeah, you'll be good to go. I see you have switched back to line six for wireless. Any specific reason you switched back from the shore? I actually get this question uh, every time <laughs> Rest Repose is on tour and all the guitarists in each city will come out and be like, hey man, so so why'd you switch? Like, well, what's going on with your rig, man? Um, so my current rig is this guy. This is what I'm currently rolling with and with no foreseeable plans to change the current setup because it's amazing. So I was, when I, I when I had a pedal board, I was using a Shure GLDX uh, pedal board wireless, which sounded great and worked great. There was a few issues with the setup that I had and I remedied most of those by going with the Helix for uh, in a rack back with the amp and just having a the Line 6 controller. Now, when I had the pedal board with some pedals, the Shure has a really nice built-in tuner, but the problem is, if we were playing a venue that the wireless doesn't work at, you are down a tuner. So I still had to carry a tuner pedal on the pedal board, which takes up unnecessary space that didn't get used 98% of the time. So I was happy to go away from the pedal board based wireless. Now, when I went to the rack, I obviously needed a rack wireless, and I did look at the Shure, and I've also always been a big fan of the Relay. Now, there's a few things with the Shure that just from, and again, this is only my experience, and I'm using the wireless primarily in a touring situation, okay? But with the Shure, there's two antenna on the front, and you can, it has a recharge with the battery. The body pack has a rechargeable lithium ion battery that you can recharge right on the front of the receiver, which is awesome. But when you're on tour, you're either headlining or you're opening. And if we're headlining, that means we would always be in a backline situation. We would do sound check and then I'm off the stage and the other bands that are playing before us would then put their gear in front of ours and another band after that and another band in front of that. So you don't actually have access to the charger. So even if you took the battery out and charged it, uh, there's nothing keep stopping from another band knocking it out of the charging port or something like that. Now, if we were opening, our stuff is cased, the caps are on the road cases until the second we go on stage. Then we take the caps off, we throw our gear on stage, we play and then we put the caps back on and then we get off the stage uh, for the next band. Those are the two scenarios that we're generally playing in and neither one of those scenarios is really conducive to a rechargeable battery. The rechargeable battery sounds great in the marketing language for a wireless, but in a touring situation, it just did not work for all of the situations that I was in. I would much rather prefer, I would much rather have double A batteries that I know are good and just pop them in my pack and just be done with it. And I know I'm gonna get eight solid hours of playtime, and I'm just gonna be done with it. Now, 
My pickups are rechargeable, my Fishman's, but even then it's three hours of charge time for 250 play time hours. And even when the little red light goes on telling me I need to recharge it, I still have six hours to get me through until they go completely dead or are, or are unusable. So that's the first reason why I didn't go with the Shore. The second reason and the biggest reason I didn't go with the Shore is it doesn't have expandable antenna um, outputs on the back. So I can't expand the amount of antennas or use a paddle system like I can with the G90. Now, the G90 for me is, it's just, it's just what I need. I can use all four antenna. Um, I already had a pack because previous to the Shure pedal board unit, I already had a G50, so I can, I'm still using the same body pack. So now I have automatically have a backup battery pack. It just made sense to get the Line 6. Um, so I just bought the Line 6 and the Line 6 G90 form function is rack mount, whereas the Shure uh, GLDX at least is not. Now I know Shure makes a ton of giant $5,000 rack wireless units. That's not what I was interested in and nor do I need that. Shure makes a great wireless, they sounded good, but if you're gonna use a digital wireless, you need to be as preventative as you can with dropouts. And dropouts will happen with any wireless ever made. Doesn't matter how good, dropouts will occur. And in order to be the most preventative for dropouts, you need to have more antenna and be mindful of your signal path. And the G90 has four antenna ports on it and so, and that I can use at the same time. So I just, yeah, that's why the G90 uh, won out. And I just love the sound of the G90 with the, the cable selector. I always have mine set at 20 feet just to roll off a little bit at the top end. I just, uh, yeah, it's just, that's what works for me. When did you get rid of your Kemper? I remember you mentioning in one of your videos that the Kemper was one of your most used and useful pieces of gear you ever purchased. I haven't had the Kemper for a few years now. Um, I still get a lot of questions from people that haven't realized it's been gone for several years now, I think two years is when I got rid of it. Really for me, it was an awesome studio tool, but it just didn't make a lot of sense to me because I hadn't really used it that much. Like the last six months or year I had it, it just sat and collected dust because more often than not, you know, everyone has their core five or six tones or something like that. They have their clean tone, their crunchy tone and a couple of high gain tones and the amps that I was dialing in for the Kemper, I had right behind me. I had the real things right behind me, so it just didn't make sense to me to be using the modeler of the real uh, of the amp that I actually owned as well. I mean, really, that's what it boiled down to. I just didn't, I used it, it was really useful. Um, it was a great studio tool, and it was still one of the best things I've ever had in the studio, but for my workflow and how I work and the demands of the people that I do mixes for, you know, Rob Scallon and like all these, uh, bands that would come in or want reamp jobs and stuff like that. It just, it didn't make sense with the workflow. And nine times out of 10, they would choose the real amp or something else over the Kemper tone. Not that the Kemper sounded bad because it sounded incredible, but I just, I don't know, didn't use it for my workflow. So I just, I got rid of it. And now Fluff reads a tweet. Roses are red, violets are blue. This poem doesn't make any sense, refrigerator. My suggestion to you this week is to check out the new album from Good Tiger. We Will All Be Gone is an incredible record. Uh, I really, really love it. Elliot Coleman and company, awesome drummer. Uh, Alex, Alex Rudy um, is just, it's the musicians are amazing, which makes the music amazing. And the mix done by Nolly is just incredible. This is a great, great album that's flying under a lot of people's radars. And I just thought I would shout it out because I thought you guys would dig it as well. All the big links down below in the description. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.